when people say to me, what, what do you think caused your leukemia? I say, the air. Uh, what else? The water. What else? The food. <laughs> you know, it's like, what doesn't now? We're the first generation that came up with all these different food additives and food preservatives, and we're paying the price. Researchers have now found a link between air pollution and mouth cancer. American Academy of Pediatrics is calling for stronger federal regulations when it comes to more than 10,000 FDA-approved chemicals added to food and food packaging. 70% of fresh produce sold in the United States has pesticide residue. The fertilizer plant built in the village had something to do with the occurrence of cancer among the residents. A toxic chemical leak from Bradley International Airport in the Farmington River has now prompted officials to take action. The World Health Organization's cancer agency has ranked the air that we breathe alongside tobacco, asbestos, and other major causes of lung cancer. Many years ago, we thought of cancer as a disease of the elderly. It was part of aging. But that's changing. Well, our environment is changing. The things that are constantly challenging the body to evolve are things that are around us that we know nothing about. Environmental exposures to pesticides, to chemicals, certainly are predisposed, I think, patients to increased risk for developing cancer. Clearly, our environment or the toxins in the environment are increasing the incidence of disease. Simply eliminating the toxin doesn't reverse that whole process. We, for now about 20 years, have had access to cell phones and we don't know what the long-term ramifications of what a cell phone that's held up to your ear is going to do. There's certainly um, speculation that there may be an association of benign brain tumors. The personal exposure to pesticides, perhaps, is being around the actual environment where they're sprayed in the, in, inhaling or ingesting part of the byproducts of it. Not being healthy promotes carcinogenesis. So there is a large component of where, where you live. You may have a lot of electromagnetic fields around you, such as you live by power wires. You live by a golf course that may use a lot of fertilizer. You may use an excessive amount of fertilizers on your lawn. As we know, pesticides are absorbed into the food itself. The food makes it to market, and uh, the quantity of pesticide that's used to you know, ensure a farm has been commercialized to a science. There is a you know, striking statistics for childhood leukemia, is that the numbers of new cases in relation to the population has increased by 35% over the last 40 years. My name is Catherine Metayer. I work here at the School of Public Health uh, at UC Berkeley, and I am the director of the Center for Integrative Research on Childhood Leukemia and the Environment. The environment at large, whatever it is, must be a very important contributor to this increase. So the study that we have done here in California have shown that being exposed to pesticide, being exposed to tobacco smoke, being exposed to you know, high pollution, being exposed to paint and solvent, those chemicals are, are damaging DNA. And that has been a focus of our understanding of why those toxins can cause leukemia. But what we also start to understand is that those chemicals can actually impact your immune system. And this is really important for childhood leukemia because Leukemia is a cancer of the blood cells. And those cells are really critical at the time of developing your immune system and your immune response. So on one end you have damaging the DNA, but on the other end you have messing up with your immune system that will eventually set the stage for developing cancer. What we tell our, you know, our, our families is that don't paint the room. If you are going to, you know, you're pregnant, you're going to have a child, the first thing that people do is to paint the house and paint the room with, with you know, toxic paints. What we had found in our studies is that the critical time that uh, um, tobacco smoke is, is toxic would actually be at the time of the conception. And the uh, father who is smoking before conception 
could actually increase the risk of leukemia in his child. There is a race to find the best treatment. There is a race to improve upon what we already have. And I understand in principle that, again, you know, everybody wants their child to be cured. But I think at the population level, children are not small adults. Children are children. They are more vulnerable. They will ingest, inhale, more toxicum than they can metabolize. So we have to protect the children. I think the power now is in people's hands. And I hope that, you know, that will be strong enough to at least turn things around and, and slow down maybe some of the mistakes we've done in the past. I'm always wondering whether we're seeing more cancers. When you look at national statistics, since the 70s, there is a slight increased number of childhood cancer cases that have gone up. Are there things that children may be predisposed, but maybe there's something that they're exposed to that can sort of trigger the final event that then tips them over the balance to develop cancer? And we're sitting here in the zebrafish lab funded by an organization called Kids Without Cancer. And using these zebrafish, which you can find at pet stores, we're hoping to uncover some of the things that may cause childhood cancer, particularly leukemia, which is the most common form of cancer that we diagnose in children. What Dr. Taub, who really started this project, he was interested in exploring whether or not zebrafish could be used as a model to study uh, childhood leukemia. We were able to develop a, a model of zebrafish where we take the human leukemic gene and we put the human gene in the fish. And that causes the fish to get cancer at about a rate of 3%. That's the same rate that children who have the same mutation, that's the rate that they get cancer. And so that's the power of the zebrafish model, and that's what we're doing.